My name's uh, Leila Jaralu. I'm from an organisation called Eco Innovators. And I'm an industrial designer and I work in sustainability. So basically what I do is I work with um, businesses and producers of products to help them understand and reduce the environmental impacts of the products that they create. Things that we design, create and consume contribute substantially to our environmental impacts. So there's a number of things we can do within that. We can be more considerate and conscious around what we consume, but also if we're going to be designers and we're engaging creativity, then we can be efficient designers and we can make much better decisions around the products that we're creating. So I'm going to talk about this thing called life cycle thinking. Life cycle thinking is a way of exploring particular issues in sustainability when producing products. It's based on a scientific assessment called life cycle assessment. Life cycle assessment is a technique for assessing the environmental aspects and potential impacts associated with the product, system or service. Basically what it is, is it allows us to see the whole of life environmental impacts. We say whole of life, you guys all have a life story, right? You could, if I sat you down and said, tell me, how, you know, when did your parents meet? What year were you born? Uh, you know, what did you do when you were five years old? Where did you live when you were ten? You could tell me your life story. And then you could probably, if I said, where do you want to be in five years, ten years, twenty, you could tell me where you want your future to be. Imagine doing that for a product. So you take this styrofoam glass and you say, tell me its life story. And LCA will tell you this product's life story. And that, when you explore its life story, then you start to understand more effectively where certain elements of this product's life story have impacted the environment and how you could reduce those. There are five main life cycle stages. There's material extraction, product manufacturing, packaging and transportation which happens across the life of the product, use and end of life. These are the five main stages that a product goes through. allows us to do using the life cycle approach in design decision making is it allows us to see true environmental impacts as opposed to assumed environmental impacts. And this is really important because systems, human and natural systems, are incredibly complex. In fact, natural systems are so complex that if you tried to sit down and understand them, you'd be spend, you know, there are scientists who spend their entire careers trying to explore just one organism's interrelationship with another in a natural system. But humans are also really good at making complex systems. And in fact, most of the systems that we've developed are incredibly complex. The idea is, is that if we're trying to make decisions about sustainability or reducing environmental impacts, we have to negotiate these complex systems and a lot of the time, what we do is we result or we default to what's called our environmental folklore. What I refer to as our fuzzy feel-good feeling you get at the back of your mind when you're doing what you consider to be the right thing. So when you make a choice, like to ride your bike instead of get in a car, or you select um, something that's biodegradable as opposed to, you know, made from uh, plastics, you make decisions that are based on a kind of framework about what's good and what's bad. Now that's a really important thing, but unfortunately, a lot of our environmental folklore is based on our experiences, the media, our upbringing, our families, and these things aren't necessarily very robust scientific processes that are giving us the best information. So when we are in a position to make decisions, especially in a design decision, context, it's really important that we use some sort of scientific investigative process to back up our assumptions and our claims. The next really important thing to understand about life cycle assessment is it's based on the exploration of inputs and outputs. Basically the idea is, is you have inputs coming into the system. Those inputs are transformed in some way and then you have outputs. is that we're looking at a number of impact categories. We're not just looking at carbon, waste and water, which are three impact categories that are focused on a lot. Because there are three things that humans need to survive. Who can tell me what those three things are? 
Air, food and water. Okay, air, food and water, the three things that sustain human, uh, humans on Earth are intrinsically reliant on natural systems and services in order to make sure we have clean water, clean air, and we can produce food. So if we create particular environmental problems, such as eutrophication, air pollutants, carcinogens and waterways, then what we actually do is that we inhibit the Earth's capacity to create those three things that we need for survival. So it's really important that when we're understanding sustainability and environmental impacts, that we're looking at a number of impact categories. Life cycle assessment is a scientific process where you put forth the hypothesis and you investigate it, you explore it, you understand that it's about the whole of life, not just one element, and you also understand that it's about looking at the things that come in and go out of the system and how they interact with the environment.